Hi, welcome. Can we say that the movie Hector and the Search for Happiness is Buddhist? Or does it unintentionally present Buddhist ideas? Yes, more than no. Before I continue, I want to mention that I'm just somewhat interested in Buddhism, so what I present here are from my limited background and knowledge, along with my friends who watched and discussed the movie with me. There will be spoilers. Now, this movie was listed on a website for 10 best non-documentary movies about Buddhism. So some friends and I decided to watch it and discuss. Now, the plot of the movie is an Englishman who's a psychiatrist from upper middle class background, has a beautiful girlfriend, has a great job, but just seems to have lost his way and has lost her for life. Thus, he drops everything to travel the world searching for happiness. Now, he goes to China, the Himalayas, Africa, the California. He meets rich people, poor people, good people, bad people, some really bad, some just a little bad. And he meets his um, old buddy and ex-girlfriend and goes on. It's actually lots of fun watching the movie. So he presented this list. And here is uh, the first one is making comparisons can spoil your happiness. And a lot of people think happiness means being rich. Many people only see happiness in their future. Happiness could be the freedom to love more than one woman at the same time. Hmm. Sometimes happiness is not knowing the whole story. Avoiding unhappiness is not the road to happiness. Does this person bring you predominantly A, up, or B, down? Happiness is answering your calling. Happiness is being loved for who you are. Sweet potato stew. Fear is an impediment to happiness. Happiness is feeling completely alive. Happiness is knowing how to celebrate. Listening is loving. Nostalgia is not what it used to be. So we found many points in that list to be Buddhist. Some maybe a little more tangential or tenuous than others. And so I would say um, I'm going to show you some points that are more obvious, some that are a little more on the, you know, tenuous side and our thoughts. So numbers 3, 12, 13, and 15, they kind of go together. So number three is many people only see happiness in their future. Number 15 is nostalgia is not what it used to be. And then happiness is feeling completely alive, followed by happiness is knowing how to celebrate. And I think if you're a Buddhist practitioner, you know about being mindful, being present, as opposed to you know dwelling in the past or dwelling in the future. So that's pretty obvious. Now, if you read um, any of Tay's books, Thich Nhat Hanh's books, one of his books, The Heart of Buddhist Teaching, Chapter 8 has a quote, the greatest miracle is to be alive. And that, amongst other things, he, you know, teaches us. Um, we thought that was, or I thought that was very applicable to these points. The next one is, um, listening is loving. And that corresponds to the Eightfold Path, right speech. And again, in Tay's book, Chapter 12, there's a quote from the book. I'm committed to cultivating loving speech and deep listening in order to bring joy and happiness to others. Blah, blah, blah. And then point number nine. Happiness is being loved for who you are. Meta practice. Need I say more? And add to some of the points that are a little more nuanced, a little more tenuous, you know, depending on... Um, but, you know, if you're 
if you're a Buddhist practitioner, I think you see the link or see see it correspond. Anyways, the first one is number one. And number one goes, making comparisons can spoil your happiness. And immediately, for me, I thought of duality. And I know the uh, in Buddhism, you know, there's the non-dual practice, but it's not just Buddhism that has that. There are many other spiritual practices that does uh, non-dual practice. But anyways, in the Buddhist cosmology, there is the non-duality. The... And then the next one is, sometimes happiness is not knowing the whole story. And that reminded me of the Poison Arrow Parable. And that's located in the Middle Length Discourse. It's called the um, Chulamalukya Sutta. I'm sure I said that incorrectly. And is uh, the other name is the shorter dis the shorter instructions to Malukya. Anyways, the story goes: somebody gets shot with a poison arrow. Somebody else comes by and says, "Well, you know, like I gotta pull it out for you." Then the person who got sh who got shot goes, "Well, who shot the arrow? Why did the person shoot me? From what direction? What kind of poison is it?" Etc. Etc. And the other person who's trying to pull the arrow goes, "There is no time to answer all those questions. We just got to pull the arrow out." So, is that tenuous? Is that not? Yes. Anyways, all right. So, um, and the last point is uh, number six: avoiding unhappiness is not the road to happiness. And again, in Tay's book. Um, there is a section where it talks about you have to accept things as they are. Um, you have to recognize suffering and happiness and continue with your life. So those are the three points that are more, I guess, uh, nuanced or tenuous. And yeah, we had to pull it in there. Anyways, so we pulled each other to figure out what we thought of the movie. And out of five... We got four out of five for liking or enjoying the movie. And then we polled how Buddhist is it out of five? And it was 3.5. So that's why I answer is more Buddhist than not. And considering that they provided 15 points and nine points made it to our list, yes, that would make sense. Now, please note that this movie is based on a book, and in the book there are 25 points. Since I didn't read the book, so I don't really know what the other points are and if they're more applicable or less applicable, or if they made any real changes to some of these points. Final thoughts. It's a feel-good movie, but it also brings light to what's important in life. Like, you know, who matters to you in your life? What's important, you know? Um, how to make yourself and those you care about happy kind of stuff. If you never watched the movie and this video didn't ruin your appetite to watch the movie, then please watch it because it's entertaining and it's nice. Feel good movie. Regardless, I just want to thank you if you made it this far in the video. The best.